Hey everyone, Nino here. So welcome to the overview of NVP CGP. Now the really good news right out of the gate is that CGP is so intuitive, you can just start and you'll probably figure it out. But let's go over it anyway to make sure you know all the little, you know, the little functions and whatnot. Okay, so let's say you have an edit like this. It's done. I did all the, you know, raw work in Capture One. I did all my cleanup work. I'm ready to start exploring some color grading, right? Couple options. I mean, I could go into Camera Raw right now, right? And open that whole extra window, right? And then play with the color wheels there. That's that's kind of cool. I could save it, you know, as whatever, TIFF, PSD, whatever I want. Pop it back into Capture One and use those color wheels. That, that's kind of cool. And people do it, right? I could throw it into Lightroom even and use those color wheels. Well, I didn't want that. So CGP does everything on the layers window actively by recalculating curves, RGB curves. And it does it in an intuitive way. You just worry about choosing the colors that you like and the intensity and all that. We'll show you in a second. You just worry about that in a very intuitive color wheel UI, right? And all the curves calculations is taken care of by CGP. Let me show you what I mean. So we're starting, right? We don't need to click a button to start. We just start grading. So let's go to shadows and pull some purple. There you go. Layers already created. All the working layers are inside, as you can see here, right? And then I can just move this actively and change the shadows to yellow or to green or to cyan, a little less cyan, a little more cyan, maybe a whole lot of purple, less, less, less. And if I want to get really granular with it, I'm on shadows, right? Click the shadows tab. Now I can zoom in and I can get really detailed with how much intensity I want. And I can pull this center point around and just get whatever result I want or just like Capture One, I can choose the intensity arc here, right? And the brightness arc as well. Now that's cool. It's like, okay, neat, color wheels, yay. Check it out though. Look here, I'm gonna show you the color wheel, excuse me, the color wheel um, UI powers this curves layer. All the calculations are done for you. So for example, when I go to shadows and I choose deep pink shadows, it calculates the curves appropriately. When I go to highlights and I choose green highlights, it calculates the curves appropriately. All of this curves calculating, what it does is allows you to have perfectly seamless grades, no matter what, how many times you change the color around, what, how radical you change the colors, whether they're similar or opposite, everything's going to be smooth. You can even throw in a midtone. So there's an orange midtone. I can choose the intensity there, right? Overall, down below, we'll get to the luminosity ranges in a minute. The intensity, I can choose light intensity, which changes, well, the intensity of all the sliders, right? Now, when I move them around, the intensity is a little more granular. I can go from very subtle and slowly bring it up to a little more intense if I want. doesn't matter where I am. I can always change it to normal and I can change it to heavy. Now, even on heavy, I'm going to go to maximum intensity on every one of my colors. Even on heavy, you notice that the grade is smooth. There's no banding. There's no artifacting. There's no weird transitions. It's because everything is being recalculated on curves. And it's not just arbitrary. This is due to testing on thousands of images that we've worked on to make sure everything is smooth. When you do brightening of the shadows, for example, it recalculates that. You do brightening of the highlights, it recalculates that. Everything ends up smooth, so it shifts things around to make sure that the color looks good no matter what. What's the benefit for you? By the way, top left corner here, reset everything. What's that mean? It simply means that you can be creative without worrying about, oh, too much. I, I wanted that much color but it looks kind of cruddy. It looks kind of muddy, so I won't do it. No, do it, have fun, play with it. On top of that, you have even more control, this luminosity range down here. So let's say I go to shadows again, I put it on like a purple. Highlights, I'm gonna put it on a green just for demo, right? So it's kind of intense, not too bad, very subtle. All right, so let's turn it on and off and kind of see what we got. Okay, cool. Now, what about these ranges down here? I'm gonna put on heavy so we can really see it. You can take the shadow range and move it upward. You see how it recalculates it? Want the highlights? More highlights, more into the mid-range. Highlights are recalculated. That green is recalculated. Or I want the greens only in the very top highlights. Recalculates. I want the shadows to be red now, and I want them only in the deeper parts. Recalculates. Okay? And then I throw the mids in the middle of it, and it recalculates everything else. I wanted more of a yellow. Recalculates everything else. I've got a real broad yellow mid, very you know, the brightest highlights are green. The darkest shadows are red. I can even make even the darker, darker ones and I get a certain look that I want. This is a little overkill, but you see the color control and the range control. So I can make the red more into the mid range. I can make the highlights more into the mid range. And now that middle yellow is kind of invisible. It's only right in the middle, still beautifully calculated in by the RGB curves. So 
reset all of that for a second. Now put it on normal. What does that mean? It means we can create a beautiful grade without worry. So I'm going to do something for real here. How about a little bit of a purple red tone there on the shadows? I do want a little bit of skin tone sort of matches her. Maybe I can also pull this ring right here, this little node around the ring to make it more yellow. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of cyan to the highlights to kind of tone them down. But I want them more here and I want that purple a little stronger and a little more in the mid range. And now I have got a grade, a grade that I love and I think is working really, really well. I can also check the blue up a little bit more if I feel I need to do that. Maybe a little more on the cyan side. Love it. I can explore what heavy might look like just a little bit more. Normal in light. Cool. Awesome. I can zoom in again to mids and I can get really granular with this just a little bit more. Maybe, maybe darken the mid just a little bit. Move this ring over to more orange, whatever. Go to shadow, same story, nice and granular. You see, I'm not going into like a step-by-step -step instructional thing because this is all just play. You just start clicking and things happen and you see results. Everything was meant to be very visual and living on the layers window. But we also have other controls, global. Global controls are handled, they can be used for corrective for one, um, but they're also great for creative opportunities and they're handled by other layers. And they're still curves layers except for the saturation. And that's again for smoothness, for, you know, to make everything as, as seamless and I guess not cruddy looking. I hate to describe it that way, but if you've added color grading to an image, you know what it's like when the color just gets muddy and you, you get a false positive that's not working and you, you abandon the color grade because just to weird, whether it's a bad luminosity mask, whether blend if it's not cooperating exactly like you'd hope, whatever. When we do it all with curves, it works so much better. Now, we have, like I said, global. So we have temperature, which moves temperature calculations in a way that most of us are used to. Double click the word and it resets. Tint as well, where again, you're also used to that. So you can do these corrective processes here now, handled by a completely different set of curves for temperature and tint. This is there, therefore it's like a secondary kind of color grade, but it's for corrective, I guess, even though I've been using it for a lot of creative purposes as well. Um, on saturation, we're doing a vibrance with color blend mode. So the saturation, like the rest of the philosophy of CGP, nothing really looks bad. Very muted, smooth and beautiful. Very, very saturated, smooth and beautiful. Everything is within reasonable workable limits and using the best calculations possible. In this case, vibrance with color blend mode. For the most part, that gives you enough color boosting to make everything look pleasant without overcooking. And of course, we have some gamma adjustments and contrast adjustments also handled by curves, but again, secondarily. So the contrast looks really smooth and beautiful. You can crank it really high and it's still useful. There's no need to go 100% where the contrast is completely useless. And the negative contrast, very useful. It doesn't get too gray and hazy. It looks nice and low contrast the way it's supposed to without getting weird and discolored, right? That's another benefit of the calculations that we have, plus the gamma calculation, which is like a really smart way to brighten and darken while preserving relative contrast. So these are great for, again, corrective, but also beautiful for simplifying a like you really like your grade that you're doing with the three-way here but you feel like it's just a little warm so you quickly make it a little cooler and you're good to go simple things like that you can also if i reset the three-way you can also just grade with this you can warm it up send it in that direction boost the saturation just work with what's there except shift the temperature and tint and you can get beautiful beautiful grades everything calculated with curves like i said that too has a reset button. So as you can see, it's just a matter of click and go. There's not anything to memorize, you just play. Most of us have worked with color wheels, but I'm gonna go ahead and close the folder. Instead of opening up Adobe Camera Raw, going back to Capture One or doing it all in advance in Capture One, same with Lightroom, we don't have to run around and jump through hoops to use color wheels, they're right here. On top of that, we made it as simple as we felt, especially with my testing, on what would be a creative tool for color grading on your layers window that isn't overly complicated too. You know, we can get crazy advanced with all kinds of color analysis, but we're trying to make it what is simple, open it up, click, 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 get a grade that you like, feel good about it, and keep rolling and be able to change. You can put layers on top of this. You can add adjustment layers, you can add mastering layers, you can do whatever you want, okay? That is the whole premise of CGP. It's almost as if it's too simple and too good to be true. And our beta testers and some of the other uh, testing team have been blown away. I myself have been using it since the last alpha version for everything that I do. 
it seems like so obvious, like, oh, color wheels and Photoshop, but it really, the way we've created it, we're immensely proud of it. And I guarantee you it's going to change uh, your whole color grading workflow. Now, let's talk about some presets as well. Let me reset everything. Okay, we'll go to the presets. I have some here that I've created, just a whole bunch of them. You can probably guess how it works, especially if you're used to NBP. Let's create a quick grade. We can even modify the ranges. There we go. Cool, cool. Go to presets, hit save. We'll just call it CGP look. I have some groups here that I've already created, um, but you can add a new one if you want. Hit create, hit save. There we go. Now it's down here. There's CGP look, there it is. But if I were to click another preset, I can see that one. Double click that one, double click that one. Let's go up to the crazier ones. Double click that one, double click that one. But we have something even cooler. Let's say you go to faded and you like that look, but you want to stack a look. Well, go to the fire one or any other one. Instead of double clicking, there's a little button on the right. See all these little buttons that pop up? Click that. And now we get fire stacked on top of faded. I can go back to global and change the opacity of fire. Click on faded. It'll, re it'll kind of, you know, extract that, that data. And now we can change the opacity of, of the faded one. Go back to fire if I want. I can use my own presets that I've worked with and stack them. The ones I've created. Stack them and change opacity until I get something that I want and and change them all too. See, if I click on violet pop, I get all those settings. If I click on fire, I get all those settings. I click on faded, I get all those settings. It always remembers the settings that you use, so you can always tweak. You can delete that folder if you want. You can change the opacity of that folder if you want. You can stack more presets. Whatever color exploration gets you motivated, gets you inspired, that's what this is for. And again, if I delete them all and I don't have anything, that's fine. It resets itself. Start over, no big deal. Just click any of these and you immediately start and it creates the layers that you need. Just click and go, run, 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 have fun. And also tucked away at the bottom of the UI is this little lock with a plus on it. That's effectively apply last look, but you save it temporarily so you can apply it to another image. Okay, check this out. And there's also even more than that. Hold up a second. Let's just go one step at a time. Here we go. You click this button while on this image and I've got a cool grade that I like. Click it. Come over to another image. This one's ready to go, but doesn't have color grading. Hit the little play button. Boom. And I apply the exact same look. All the metadata is there in the UI and I can keep changing things, but it gets even more exciting than that. Let me go back to my original image. Let's say I'm grading it and I go, yes, purple, but blue. No. How about red shadows? No, let's go to red shadows. Uh, yellow shadows. I'm not sure. How about back to the purple shadows, but orange highlights and cyan midtones. And well, maybe not that many. Maybe it's tone it down. You're making choices. You're playing along and you think, oh, wait, a minute ago, it looked pretty cool. What do I, how do I get back to that? Ah, history button down here, back and forward. So I just click the back button and I go back through everything that I just went through and I can go, there it was. That's the look I like, right? You can go forward in time too. to all the previous little changes that you made. Once you get to the maximum, you can't go anymore. Obviously, there it is. Now, here's the cool part. If I copy, like I just showed you, come over here, hit the play button. Not only do I get the grade I'm working with, but I get the same history. So I can dig back through the history on a new shot. It moves the same temporary history over. Yes, once the history, once your session is done and you save the file, that gets purged out of CGP, but that's a good temporary apply last look, uh, but with a little extra spice to it with the history. Now, if you really love a look, obviously save it as a preset. You can use it on many images later, or if it's just something to start from in future projects, but apply last look even keeps the history. And that's another function that we have not seen. And we felt very excited to provide that because again, it's about exploring color. And when you're exploring, sometimes you go, hey, what was that last thing I did? It was pretty cool. Dang. Let's say you make a change on the new one. And you're like, you know what? I like this grade better. Okay. Copy. Come back to the original one. Make sure you're on the CGP folder. Hit play. There you go. We can constantly keep this data swap back and forth from our CGP folders and the CG panel. Uh, CGP panel keeps up with all of it. Again, you save, you close, these sessions are gone. But for temporary working, especially when you have a, a set together like this, and you're trying to make them all match, amazing. For more permanent things, save presets. You have folders that you can put them in, all these little cool accordion folders that open up. You can do all kinds of things with them, right? Look at these color casts that we created. Or rather that I created. These are fun. These are just me playing around. You can take these and like stack them. So let's put a red cast on top of it and then like a cyan cast on top of that. And then play. Oh, the opacity is already kind of low on those. I can make it even lower. 
why not you can also do this right in the layers window too but there you go look at that cool funky grade by just stacking cast together we wanted to create a tool that was easy that was beautifully smooth and dynamic for you so you can always get beautiful results no matter what you're doing right there on the layers window so i know it's, this video sounds more like a promo rather than an instructional video but honestly if you download it and just start clicking you'll get it things like the little apply last look and the history we want to make sure you guys saw that as well but get it installed start playing and then forget about it we don't need pats in the back we don't need you to celebrate mvp we love to see you guys do creative and wonderful things especially with color this is like one of those behind the scenes tools that i know is going to make a big difference to all artists out there